Do you ever feel like you just can't keep up with the demands of your business? You follow all the mechanics that you need to follow, you follow all the processes, all the strategy, you've got things systemized, maybe you don't, but you know what you should be doing and you know how you should be doing it, but you're just not doing it. And you can't quite put your finger on it. It's something, something inside you. It's the way you're feeling, it's your energy levels, it's your clarity, it's your ability to perform at a high level over a long period of time. It's your ability to do a marathon, you know? And you kind of think, well, what the hell is this? Now, a lot of you are gonna realize or are going to be aware that it's your health, right? You cannot be a high performer in any element of life, right? In sports, in raising a family, in cooking for yourself, in you know running a business, in being an employee, if your health is not the absolute solid core foundation of everything you do, right? Because you try build a skyscraper, try build the Burj Khalifa, yeah? Or um, Empire State Building on wobbly foundations or on no foundations or on, you know, just a couple of bricks. It's not gonna work. The taller it is, the deeper and stronger the foundation needs to be. And you and I, we're aiming for that level. We're not aiming for a two-story. No, no, no. We're aiming for the big leagues, right? So in order to do that, health needs to be a massive priority. So let me talk you through some of the key elements of health in business, how health is going to affect your business, and some of the things you can do to kind of combat them. Most of these are going to be, are not going to be hacks. They're going to be actual things you have to do that might take a bit of time, there might be a bit of cost involved, but that is life. You can't expect to be a millionaire, expect to work this hard and not have the energy to do it or not treat your body right in order to do it. What's the point of being rich and unhealthy? There's plenty of rich and unhealthy people out there. That's not wealth, right? Classic, cliche, but health is wealth. So the first thing for me is your energy levels are your productivity power. Your energy is the currency, right, that you exchange for the things you produce. <clears throat> you understand? Your energy is the currency, it's the value that you are exchanging in the world, right, to receive back the things that you want to do and the things you want to produce and the things you want to invest in, right? And if you have nothing to exchange, right, if I go to a shop and I have no money, I have one pound, I'm in... I'm in Primark and I have one pound. Oh, you probably get some stuff for that much, but am I gonna buy a three-piece suit with a pound in Primark? No. I go to the petrol station with a tenner and my tank's 80 quid. I'm not gonna get very far, right? Because I don't have enough to exchange with. And it's the same thing if you don't have the energy levels. How are you gonna produce, like all these people you follow, all these people you look at, all the multi-million pound business you want, if you don't have the energy, right, to exchange. If you haven't got the input, how the hell are you getting the output, right? <laughs> you know, if you feel sluggish, your business is gonna be sluggish too. Even if you have staff, or right? even if you're in a high managerial, what? if you're being sluggish, it is gonna filter down to them. The culture and the attitude you have will always make its way through your company, right? And your body's like an engine. If it's running on poor fuel, bad food, bad lifestyle, right, lack of exercise, and not a lot of good fuel or a lot of any goodness in you, it's just gonna be choking, literally. It's not gonna run. It's gonna, it's gonna have catastrophic engine failure. It's gonna blow up, right? You're gonna mash up your head gasket. That's what happens, right? So what's the point of having a Ferrari with no fuel? Please someone tell me, okay, yeah, it looks gorgeous, but I'm trying to get to like the shops, you know what I mean? You need to get past it. Like, what, what do you mean? So your energy levels are so, so important. For me, one of the key things that helps with energy levels, super simple, right? <laughs> super simple to say, eating healthy, five fruit and veg a day, lots of fiber. And we'll talk about fiber in your gut in a second. Movement, you know, it has to be 10,000 steps a day. Lots of studies showing that actually it's not really 10, it's probably like between five and 10. If you're getting five as a minimum and you're also exercising at the gym, you're running, you're swimming, you're doing archery, I don't know, that you are fit, this matters. 
low body fat percentages, high muscle mass percentages, all of these things help your energy. And eating the right foods, don't just eat five fruit and veg a day, but you have McDonald's for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, like, you know what I mean? Like, let's not be silly. And I'm gonna have a, another whole video actually on like what I do and how it really impacts me personally. So the next thing for me is mental clarity. Now, you can have brain fog or you can have laser focus or you can be somewhere in the middle. To be a high performer, realistically, you need laser focus, right? You're not gonna get anywhere with brain fog. You know, everything I've said, lack of sleep, bad diet, lack of movement gives you foggy thinking. This is not my opinion. This is proven on plenty of double blind clinical trial studies. Thousands of years of Eastern medicine proves this. You know, there's nothing to debate here, right? And actually, short term benefit of exercise, you know, when you're trying to solve a problem, you're stuck on an idea, you know, you're not making progress in something, go for a walk, move your body, you know, put on some, put on some coffee and do some Congolese waistline. That's what I do. Coffee all media. That's what, that's what I do. Uh, you know, and way when the waist is moving, the blood is flowing down, but then it also goes up and you feel refreshed. Even just getting up from your desk, walking around the house, walking around the office, whatever it is, makes a big difference, right? For me, something that's helped massively with mental clarity is probably intermittent fasting. Um, I, I kind of do it naturally. I don't really know it was that until I looked it up and everything, but like not eating until sort of 11, 12 most days, means that I just have a period in the morning of almost like extra focus before, you know, the carbs get to you, before the blood does then shift to your stomach naturally. I've kind of got a little boost, a little XP boost in the morning. But if you're finding yourself foggy, right, it could be that you don't know where you're going in business. It could be that element. But a lot of the time, a lack of sleep, you know, now the seasons are changing. I don't know what season we have in England. It's like cold, rainy, shit, four days of summer, back to it. But when the seasons change, there's something called SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder. Check it out. Maybe you get yourself like a SAD light and they're meant to help, but you know, sometimes when the seasons change, it gets colder, it gets darker. It can have an impact on your health. So don't just think, oh, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a superhero. Doesn't matter what's happening out there. I, you know, I'm sharp, man. Like honestly, all these people you follow who are online, just dickheads are just lying. Like, it, like the seasons affect us, we're humans. We're evolutionary creatures. The seasons should affect us. If they don't affect you, you're lucky. But also, I don't know if you're that suitable to live on Earth as an ev like you wouldn't have survived back in the day. Now you do, fine. But you know, when when it really mattered, like you'd be dead, bruh. I would be there, cud cuddled up in fetal position with SAD. But hell, I'd survive. I'd survive. You'd be out there in the cold with your, you know, with your ass out. Anyways, stress management. Now. This is, I suppose, mental health. This is you understanding that stress from poor health overspills into your business, but also stress from the business can combine with this or separately and cause issues, right? You need a level of stress which is good for you and which is pushing you and which is gonna promote you to do more work. And that's actually called you stress. I think it's spelled EU stress. Look it up, lots of studies on it, right? Now, did you know there's a stress hormone called cortisol? produced in your adrenal, it's your adrenal cortex, or it's the other part of the adrenal glands. I learned this in, in biology or biochemistry at university. Cannot remember. One of the two produces cortisol, I believe. And this is a stress hormone. It makes you feel stressed, increase your blood pressure. Um, you know, it can make you feel anxious, you know, when in a meeting, public speaking, exercise chronically and on the short term reduces your levels of cortisol. So does, you know, staying hydrated, smiling, you know, it, it's stress management. All of these things reduce this feeling and of course this hormone flowing around your body. Now, if you can manage your stress, you can manage your business. If you can manage your business, you can manage your stress. It's kind of a chicken and egg thing. But what you don't want is stress coming from your health. You want stress from your business because that's what you've asked for. You can't complain if your plate is full if you wanted to eat. But when it comes from things that are really fully, truly in your control, that shouldn't be stressing you out, like diet, you know, that's not what you want. Now sleep, there's so many good books on sleep. I think is it, oh, I forgot his name, Matthew Walker maybe has a book called Why We Sleep, I think, or 12 Reasons Why We Sleep. Really good book, check that out. Loads and loads of podcasts on it, loads of study on it. You can get Fitbits, Whoops, whatever, to track your sleep. 
but getting the right amount of sleep for you, which look, it varies for everyone, but I think they say between seven and nine, might be between seven and eight of actual sleep. So this tells me I'm in bed for 10, 15 minutes, then I go to sleep and then I wake up. And then so actually the time is different. <clears throat> if you stay in bed a bit longer or like you take a bit longer to go to bed, then of course your actual sleep is declined. Now don't think, oh, I need to go up half an hour early to do all that work. If you sleep the time you're meant to, right? It's a lot better than ruining the time you should be sleeping for half an hour extra of work. Because throughout the day, yes, you might have gained allegedly half an hour of that extra work. But I bet you during the day, that half an hour is gonna be clawed back in moments, in periods where you don't have that same productivity. And then what? You basically lost that half an hour of work you did in the morning, right? You've net lost it and you've lost half an hour of your sleep. So that's a bit silly. Um, and there's some stats I read that entrepreneurs who get enough sleep are more effective decision makers. And we have a lot of decisions to make like on a daily, micro level, macro level, etc. And if you've been sleep deprived, I have, I like to party, you know, I'll come back at four or 5 a.m. and fuck. You know, and I've woken up soon after that, I've caught flights, it's not good. You can see, I don't care if you're, you're well or hard, yeah, you can see how much sleep affects you when you don't have it, right? You can tell how much it distracts you, how much it, it just takes away from you. And if you drink, combine that with alcohol, fuck it, it's even worse, right? So sleep is something you have to absolutely get dialed in on. It's, it's non-negotiable, there's enough studies, enough data out there, and let's be real. There's lots of processes that happen when we sleep, only when we sleep. So what does that mean? We need it, right? There's hormones that put us to sleep, melatonin, not melanin, yeah? Melatonin, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You have pineal glands, you have sensors here which detect light, which is also part of why you feel SAD. Anyways, we're going into, you know, biochemistry now. Now, gut health, oh, I could talk about this forever. So many good books, really good book called Gut by Julia Enders. And actually, really good program on Netflix. Just type in gut, it'll come up. Really nice animations, really, really clear, explains. You may not know this, but your gut is essentially your second brain. In fact, it has, I think it has the second, I think after your brain, oh God, I'm gonna get this so wrong. It has a massive number of neural, right? Nervous system connections, your stomach, huh? Thought they're all up here in the brain, no. Your stomach, this whole thing of gut intuition and gut feeling, it comes from the reality of actually our stomach is so wired literally in <clears throat> to our feelings, <clears throat> to our immune system, everything. And so when you think about what are we putting into our gut and our stomach and our, like this stuff is going to have an impact on our overall health, our immune system, our mental health, how we feel, how we are in business and vice versa. You know, anxiety, where do you feel it? I feel it in the pit of my stomach. It's different for some people, but we feel things here, you know? And a lot of our immune response can start there. You know, because a lot of the foods we eat have all this shit on nowadays, right? And who defends us from that? It's the gut. So if you are not having enough fiber, if you're not reading or at least have some basic knowledge about gut health, I actually think your overall health is just not gonna be as good. And, and for me, I don't think that's an opinion. Again, there's plenty of research about it. Really good podcast called Zoe, Z-O-E. Yeah, they're selling a product now as everyone is, but still really, really good studies they've done on gut health. And read that book. I promise you if, you, if you are totally unaware of how important your gut is, you know, this will show you. Like I'm a massive, massive, what's the word, fan of learning more about the gut, trying to treat it effectively and correctly and getting enough fiber because we just don't in a Western diet, right? Um, now look, when you prioritize your health, the people around you, your friends, your family, your loved ones, your team, your staff, they see this and it makes them consider it as well, trust me. Even if it's in a way that it makes them feel bad unintentionally, or they can see how your body's changing or how your skin is glowing, yeah. Thank you, Lush, for the Lush, sponsor me. Come on, I'm, I'm not a typical moisturizer influencer, but I feel like I could be. Like I'm, I'm so, there's so much Lush on me right now. I smell, I sm honestly, I smell incredible. Yeah, it's a shame you can't smell it, but um, like spiced orange on the body. Uh, and then the hair is the like conditioning milk. It literally smells like coconut, almond, candle, 
creamy milk. It's it's sensational. Okay, it's very expensive. I spent like 90 quid and got like four products like this big, but you get what you pay for. It's it's incredible, honestly. So yeah, big up Lush. And they made a watermelon, um, they had a watermelon soap as well. And if you know why that's important, then you're a real one. So when you are fresh and you're healthy, you're, you are more productive, your business is more productive, your staff are more productive. When you have longevity in yourself, because you're treating your body like it should be treated with respect, everything changes, I promise you. If you've been unhealthy, you've been overweight, you've had bad skin unrelated to a sort of medical condition, you've felt bad about yourself in the mirror, you haven't looked at yourself and said, damn boy, you're looking good. <laughs> you know, I said it every morning. Then something needs to change and something can change. Now look, it is so, so difficult. Our bodies make it very hard. Our bodies want fat on us. You know, they don't want to be looking like Mike Thurston. That's not evolutionarily beneficial to us. So it is very hard to lose weight. It's very hard to gain muscle. That is just life. And you've got things like Ozempic, which is an artificial solution to an artificial problem. Cavemen didn't need Ozempic. Ozempic's like a weight loss drug that was originally for diabetes, but then it realized, wow, it actually loses weight, weight super quick with not too many side effects yet. I'm sure in a year or two we'll discover it and you'll be fucked, right? Um, but that was only created because of the problem which we created. We're not trying to fight something that's naturally existed or that we haven't created. We are fighting obesity. We're fighting a health pandemic that we have created. An artificial solution for an artificial problem. <laughs> Who makes money? Go figure, right? But we shouldn't need these things because we have natural solutions to ensure that we don't have these artificial or natural problems. Eating healthily, moving our bodies, thinking about longevity, thinking about our gut. Go watch the Netflix program. I think it's called Blue Zones. So, so interesting. Incredible how these people live to such a long age and are so mobile and so healthy. There is so much to be learned from blue zones alone, right? Different types of food, different types of mentality, different types of learning. But I say all of this not to preach purely about your health, but to really warn you that if you aren't looking after your health, forget the rest of it. If you haven't got your health, you ain't got the rest of it. You can be as rich as you like, yeah? And unhealthy as you like, sitting in a Lamborghini with a life expectancy half of mine, What's the point? I'm not saying I've got a long one, but like, what is the point, right? Health underlies everything you do. And I promise you, if you wanna be a high performer, you need to be a high performer. People will take you more seriously. Don't pretend you don't judge. Don't pretend that when you see someone who's hench, someone who looks good, someone who's glowing, you don't think, mm, they're successful, they got more money than they probably have because they look like it. You know you think that, we all do. And so why isn't that the impression necessarily that you're living. So I'm gonna leave you with this. The next time you skip the gym, the next time you pull an all-nighter, next time you take some Adderall, the next time you don't look after your health, you skip the grapes and you go to the chocolate covered shit fucking e emulsifiers, E numbers, whatever. It's not just your health at stake. It's your business at stake and your family and your friends. But as entrepreneurs, you know, we care about our business a lot. And you know what? I'd love to know, what is one healthy habit that you've recently started or you're going to start, right? That actually now you've learned, hopefully you knew anyway, is going to boost your business. Leave a comment below, send me a message on Instagram. I would love to know. Actually, while you're there, do me a favor. If you're on Spotify, scroll up to the top. You should be near the top anyway. There's some stars there or something or three buttons, click them and leave five stars. You don't have to type anything. It doesn't even let you type anything. If you're on Apple Podcasts, where I still have the most reviews of any UK property podcast, even though it's not a property podcast. So what does that say about the rest of you property podcasters? Your shit. Um, leave a review there and you can write some words as well. That'd be quite nice. Really appreciate that. And if you're on the YouTubes, just hit the bell icon. Bell. And uh, I'll see you on the next podcast.